Whether you've outgrown your current hosting package, you're looking to make the most of the latest deal, or maybe you just fancy a change. At some point in the lifespan of your WordPress website, you may be faced with the task of migrating from one location to another. But how do you do that? Hi there, my name's Tom, and in this video, I'm gonna take you through the process of manually migrating your WordPress website from one location to another. Now, there are a range of plugins that will do this migration for you, but they aren't all free, and when you use a plugin to do the migration, you don't actually know what it's doing to your site and what files it is or potentially isn't taking across. With a manual migration, you'll have a really, really clear idea of what exactly is being done to your website, what exactly has been moved, and also, if it does go wrong, you might have a better idea of fixing it. If you've not done this before, this can seem like a fairly daunting task. But don't worry, in this video, I'm going to take you through step by step and show you exactly how to manually migrate your WordPress website. So the first method to look at for manually migrating your WordPress site actually is to not do it at all. Instead, simply get in contact with your hosting company and see if they offer a migration service. We at Fastos, for example, offer a completely free migration service for our WordPress package. It doesn't matter where it is, as long as our engineers can get into where the files are stored for your current site where it's hosted, we can get it migrated for you. Okay, with that out of the way, now let's actually look at how to manually migrate your WordPress website from one location to another. So first things first, we need to get the files backed up from your current hosting location. So before we get our hands dirty, it's actually probably worth mentioning that a lot of hosting providers give you access to a file manager which is basically an online portal that you can log into where you can see all of your website files and actually interact with them there. I'm not going to go too in depth with using a file manager simply because every provider might have a different way of doing this. That being said, if you want to use your file manager, you're more than welcome to and you can probably follow along a lot of the steps anyway using the file manager. It will just look slightly different. So what we're going to do is use FTP or file transfer protocol. Now to actually do that, we're going to need an FTP client and we are also going to need the FTP login details. Again, your current hosting provider should be able to help you with those if they're not immediately visible in your control panel. So in terms of an FTP client, the one that I would recommend to use is FileZilla. The reason for that is it's free, it's open source, and it's pretty simple to use. I provided the link below on how to download FileZilla. So get that downloaded, open it up, get your FTP access details, and just whack them in. So get put in the server, put in the username, put in the password, and then click connect. And you should now be connected into your FTP space. What you'll normally need to do is now navigate through and find where those site files are. Now, typically they'll all be held in a directory called something like htdocs or public underscore HTML or something of that nature. Now, what that's actually called does depend on what your provider uses in terms of their server backend technology and that sort of thing. If you're having trouble finding where those files are, again, your hosting provider should know where they are. They should be able to help you if you can contact the support team. Now I know I'm in the right place when I go into that directory and I see three main directories that tell me that I'm in the WordPress directory. And that is the WP admin area, the WP content area, and the WP includes area. Those are your core files. So if you see those, you're in the right place. Okay, so the next step is now to actually back those files up. Go back a directory so that you can see the kind of container folder, the htdocs, public HTML, whatever it's called. Grab that folder, right click, and just click download. What that will do now is download a full copy of everything in that directory, and it will download it through to your computer so that you have a local backup. Now, the reason I'm telling you to do this is when it comes to doing a migration, and to be honest, when it comes to doing anything to your website, you always want a backup before you take that action. And um, whilst this is an old school way of doing backup, it's obviously plugins that do backups for you, that sort of thing. Doing it this way means you know for sure you have a concrete backup that is stored on your computer, which honestly, that's it's 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 a lifesaver. Just do it, just honestly, just do it. What you may find is that this backup is actually gonna take a long time and that depends on the size of your site. If it is looking like it's gonna take a long time, and when I say a long time, I'm talking, you know, hour plus. If it's looking like it's gonna take that long and you're using your site as a as an image library or as a e-commerce site or something like that, then what I'd actually suggest is going to our video on how to do large site migrations. It's linked right up there in the title card up there and also it's down in the description below. Now, if you're happy to proceed with this and you're getting those files downloaded pretty quickly, great. Okay, so now that you have the site files downloaded, it, we now need to take a copy of the database. Now, the way to take a backup is to log into the database area using PHP MyAdmin. Now, most providers will give you access to your database using PHP MyAdmin. How you log into that is dependent on the provider. They might offer different ways of doing it. 
with Fastos. Here's how we do it. We just click on this and when we, when we log in, once we're logged in, we're now seeing the full database interface. Now, what we want to do here is select the database that we want to back up. And then we want to hit the export button to take a full export of that database. Now, if you've got more than one database in this area, in that list, what you'll actually need to do is verify which database you need to use. And how to do that is pretty simple. If you've still got FileZilla open, simply go back into your site space. And what you're looking for is the WP config file. Open that one up, open it in Notepad or something like that. Scroll down and what you're looking for is the area where all of the database details are stored. And you'll see DB name, DB username, that sort of thing. The DB name is the bit that we want here. That is literally what this database is called. Once you've got that name, go back into phpMyAdmin, cross-reference, they'll match up. You'll know which database is the one that your site is using. Once you know that, simply again, click on the database, click on the export button and you'll be taking an export. Once that is done, you now have a full site backup on your local machine. And what I recommend you do is simply put both of those into a folder together somewhere, somewhere safe, somewhere where you know they aren't gonna get lost or deleted or anything like that. Make sure you also date it as well in the folder name, just so it's very, very clear what this is, when it was taken from. Now that we've got the full site backup, it's now actually time to get this onto the new location. So first of all, make sure that you've got that new package up and running and it's working. A very quick way to actually check that it is working typically is if they offer a test domain function so that you can quickly just open up a test domain, have a look and see if that's actually working or not. Now, if your new package came with WordPress pre-installed, then you'll see a default WordPress website in there saying something like hello world or something like that. If they don't offer a test domain functionality and the package is definitely up and running, what you then can do is use the host file just to double check and make sure that it's all working. Using the host file is a really easy trick just to make sure that a site space is working correctly without having to change your DNS. If you want to use the host file, if you want to learn how to do that and you don't know yet, Title card above, give that a click. That'll take you straight to the video where I tell you how to use the host file effectively. Also, again, down in the description below. Once you're absolutely sure this is working properly, then it's time to start uploading files. Okay, so the first thing that we actually wanna do then is upload the database files. What we wanna do again is open up the PHP My Admin for the new package this time. Now, if your service provider does give you WordPress installed automatically, then you'll notice you already have stuff there. So what you'll wanna do is simply drop the tables that have already been created. Very easy to do. All you have to do there is select the database and then select the little tick box. There'll be a little tick box there. Select all and then just click the drop button to drop all of the tables out of that database. That just means that you have a clean database space to start working with. Once that's done, you then just simply need to import the new database files, which very easy to do again. Simply click the import button and then when you get the option to find your MySQL file that you downloaded and then just upload it. And then there you go. You've got your database files up on the new database ready to go. Once that's done, it's time to upload your site files. Again, it's basically just following the same steps we've already followed, just doing it in reverse this time. So what we now want to do is simply open up the FTP space for our new site hosting or the file manager, if that's what you've been doing so far. But as I said, in this video, we'll use the FTP space. So just get that open in FileZilla, obviously using the new details for your new space. If WordPress has already been installed, you'll notice that again, you've, still, you've got files there already. There is a simple way to do this where we don't have to copy everything over. And if that doesn't quite work, then what I'd suggest instead is simply doing the full migration and putting all of the site files in there. But for now, what I would suggest going forward is just try the simpler version first, which I'll show you now. So all you'll need to do when you're in the FTP space find the WP content folder for the new WordPress installation. Delete that, get rid of it, we don't want that. And what you'll then wanna do is find the WP config file. Once you've found that, we do want that for now. What we want to do there is rename that file. And that could be very simple. You could just put old in the name or something like that, just so that we know that file is there. It's not gonna get overwritten. What we then wanna do is for the old site, the site we wanna migrate across, we wanna take the config file and we wanna put that into this site space. Now that we've got both in the same site space, what you wanna now do is open them both up in Notepad for all of the database details that are in the new file, so the one that you've renamed. We want to take the DB name, the DB user, the DB password, and the DB host. We wanna take all of those and put them into that file that we've just pasted across. The reason that we're doing it this way is because this original WP config file that we have has a lot of data in there that actually relates to the website itself. For example, there are salt keys. There may be 
different file paths that you specified in that same config file. Nine times out of 10, you probably won't have an issue using the new file and just switching the data. But if we do it this way, we can absolutely make sure that we have all of the WP config data that we need moved across so that our website will work properly as it did on the last platform. That's that sorted. The next bit is we obviously we just deleted the WP content in the new space. So let's take the files that we want, the files we want to make it across, copy the WP content folder and move it across and put it right back into the same space where the new WP content folder was. And that's it. What we've done there simply is move the content across and we've changed the details that the new space uses to access the database. And the reason why we've done it that way is because for most WordPress websites, the only files that will really be different are contained in your WP content area and also in your database. Everything else typically is core WordPress files that don't normally get changed. Now, obviously your mileage may vary. If you do find that after doing this, you're missing some content, something's not working right, then yes, you may want to simply wipe the new space and paste everything across minus the WP config file. That is, you do want to make sure that in the new space, you have a copy of that. You need that for the database name and the database location, the IP address. You don't want to lose those. Um, so make sure that you have those. But aside from that, yes, everything else can be cleared out and you can just paste the new site files in if you want to. This way should be quicker, should be easier. And nine times out of 10, honestly, will just work and it'll be absolutely fine. You'll have no problems. The only other file that you may need to consider moving across is your HD access file. Again, that depends entirely on how your original site was configured. If you do have custom configurations like that, then perhaps you might want to get in contact with the support team for your new space just to make sure there's no issues that you run into whilst doing that. So now with those files moved across, with the database moved across, your content is now in the new space. Your website has effectively been migrated. If you can access that site now using the host file, if you did that before, then you should now see that that space is loading your current website absolutely fine which means there's only one final step to do and that's changing your dns what you'll need to do is either log into your domain registrar's portal or get in contact with your domain registrar and basically get into those advanced dns records for your domain and the two records that you'll need to change are the www record and the blank record or at record or apex record however it's referred to with your domain host Obviously, if there's any confusion, if you're unsure which record to change, get in contact with whoever hosts your DNS services and just double check with them and make sure you're changing the right record. Once you've confirmed it, what you'll need to do is get the IP address for your new hosting location. Again, that should be pretty visible on, on their portal or their control panel. If it's not, then all you need to do simply is get in contact with their support team. I'm sure they'll be able to confirm with you what the IP address is. Once that's confirmed, whack that into your DNS, get it saved wait for propagation. There you go. Your website is now live in a new location. And hopefully if you follow this guide along, it's working absolutely fine and you're getting whatever benefits you wanted to get out of this move as well. So there, there you go. That is a migration completely done. And now you've got a new website hosted elsewhere. Obviously, if it's not working quite right, if something's not, if you just can't seem to get past a particular hurdle, first of all, just make sure you go back into the video to try and follow it through again. Make sure that you haven't missed any steps. If you haven't and it's still not working at that point, you may want to get in contact with the support team for your new location. Typically what is happening here, if it's not working at this stage is either this was an older site and it might be an issue with a PHP version, or it might be something like the WordPress version is too old and it's mismatching with what's on the package, that sort of thing. At that point, that's when the support team for the new hosting company needs to get involved so they can have a look and just, you know, make sure there's no underlying issues that need to be resolved there. Okay, well, hopefully this has been helpful and has shown you how honestly relatively easy it is to migrate your website. This ended up being a fairly long video, but hopefully you've been able to follow through and it's all gone really well for you. And if so, and if it has, please let me know in the comments. If you run into any issues, please let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll try and offer the advice I can. And obviously, if you found the video helpful, please give it a like. And if you want to see more tech tips from Fast Hills, please subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.